I'd like to call to order the May 6th, 2008 meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. May we have the roll call, please? Agency members Draymond? Here. Quintero? Here. Weaver? Here. Yusefian? Here. Chairman Majorian? Here. Uh, may we have your report? The agenda for the May 6, 2008 regular meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency was posted on Thursday, May 1st, 2008 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. May we have the next item? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move. Second. If there are no changes, corrections, or abstentions, the minutes will be approved as submitted. Next item, please. Next item is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the Redevelopment Agency may question or respond to a speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The matter may be referred to staff through the Executive Director for an investigation and report. Thank you. I have one card from Herbert Milano. Good afternoon. My name is Herbert Milano, a member of the Redevelopment Agency um, and city staff. I have a, a small gift for you uh, as a reminder of last week's vote with regard to the free trade agreement. So uh, this is a uh, lapel pin for Mr. Yousefian and for Mr. Najarian and for Mr. Weaver. Uh, these are American flag pins made in China. I've, um, I would like to perhaps suggest that on, on, uh, on Flag Day that maybe the city can come up with a resolution banning the import of American flags and American flag pens. Kind of like a reminder of where our, our manufacturing has gone. Um, I would like to, uh, to address a couple of issues with regard to the Americana at brand and redevelopment in general. I've, um, uh, I read, um, oh, I, I heard the, uh, the interview by Mr. Caruso on KNBC, and I couldn't agree with him more. I think he mentioned that something along the lines that politicians are concerned too much with getting reelected. And I think that the other message that he brought up was that uh, elected officials have too much experience signing the back of the check instead of the front of the check. And I think that what he was referring to is, is ownership. That when you own something, you truly move forward to, uh, to having a, a greater degree of, of accountability for it. The, um, I went a couple of times to the Americana this weekend, went with my wife and kids, and I actually ran to Rick Caruso, shook his hand, and gave him a... a uh, my opinion with regard to the amazing way of finishing a project of this magnitude, 15.5 acres in less than two years. And my God, would I love to see uh, staff members from the city of Glendale working for Caruso for a short time to see how basically project management is done. It's excellent, truly excellent. But nonetheless, as I was looking at the, at the area, I look, this, this area looks so much like, uh, uh, like Beverly Hills, you know, Rodeo Drive and so forth. And then I started looking east on Colorado, and I said, my God, this area looks blighted. Now, in 2004, I questioned whether or not the city was really blighted, especially the town center area. But now, by comparison, I would say that area definitely looks a good look at uh, uh, a review for redevelopment. I think that the areas on Colorado, I cannot imagine look, be, living for example, having a condo at the Americana, looking east on Colorado, it looks absolutely awful. <laughs> it didn't look as bad before, but now I'm, I'm a convert. The area is blighted. The, um, what I'd like to suggest is that the opportunities for proper redevelopment along Colorado, especially the area surrounding Central Park, are huge, are truly, truly huge. The idea of, um, of developing quality residences you know, and our office buildings in that area and having a quality large park for a cultural urban center, I think are truly fabulous. The, um, I got a sense of the dynamics of the Americana this weekend. And as you know, for those who paid attention carefully, I was never against the project per se, rather the way the finances were calculated and how the, um, the subsidy was provided. Because I may be a Democrat, but I'm also a fiscal conservative and I don't like the idea of the city not getting a return of its investment properly. And the, uh, so that will be a topic for another session. 
as I began to recalculate what the actual income stream that is truly coming from the Americana vis-a-vis -vis the investment that the city made. Because the last time I checked, in 2004, we lost about 35 cents per automobile that comes in. But now that you know they're charging for parking, there might be an opportunity for the city to tap on to that, uh, to that income stream. The, um, so I was never against the concept, the style, or the development per se that Caruso was bringing. It was never like that. It was always about the money and how the finances were calculated, especially about the fact that the interest on the bonds was never included in the calculation. You know, and even though it's redevelopment the city, still the same family, still the same people paying taxes. So I would like to suggest that the city really take a good, hard look now again, now that the Americana is there, at developing the right style, the right identity that the city needs to segue on this success. Thank you very much. Mr. Bellano, thank you for your flag made in China. I would have not bought this with made in China emblazoned on it, but as a token of our appreciation for the free traders on the council, we'd like to extend to you a City of Glendale pin. I noticed that one is lacking from your lapel. Even though you don't reside in Glendale, I know your interests are in Glendale, and if the Mr. Clerk uh, please present that. Would you like to trade? Where was it made? <laughs> we'll, we'll start a, a pin swapping uh, event. You just. Very much. I'll keep that. You may want to know it's also made in China. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Quintero. Well, since you mentioned free trade, I wanted to uh, send a message to the free traders. Uh, I went down to uh, Long Beach Harbor, and as usual, I shouldn't say I, it's depressing, but it's certainly close to depressing when you see the enormous volume, the millions of containers that come to the U.S. They're filled with finished products, and all we export is scrap. And I confirmed it with the harbor official scrap. And... Um, and paper products, waste paper uh, products. However, this time I was even more stunned. Of course, all of the shipping companies are all either Chinese, Korean, Japanese. But this time I was even more stunned when uh, one of the officials there told me that the huge cranes that load and unload these, uh, <coughs> these container ships, and they have the biggest container ships in the world, those cranes are no longer made in the United States. They are actually put on what must be ocean-going barges, and they're brought to the port of Long Beach and the port of L.A. fully assembled and then set on the... So we've gotten to the point in this country where we can't even make the cranes that unload and uh, and load the containers. So just wanted you free traders to uh, <laughs> to make sure you, uh, you knew about that. I do have a response to that. However, I'll save that for a later <laughs> time. Maybe we can set a study session for the redevelopment agency to discuss free trade issues. <coughs> we'll get back to you, Mr. Starr. Are you writing this down? <laughs> okay. The next speaker is Greg Astorian. Uh, Mr. Chair, my name is Greg Astorian, members of um, uh, Redevelopment Agency. I believe Mr. Milano was complimenting the Americana, if I'm not wrong. However, crap wise, that compliment was, but. Uh, um, that's a uh, welcome. Uh, I will welcome uh, his compliments. I will tell you this much, though. I mean, I, um, as a stakeholder, next door property belongs to a client and also a partner. And so I, I had a keen interest in finding out how the traffic was over the weekend, how many people showed up, and so forth. And so, as opposed to having family members driving themselves down to Americana, I took the role of a chauffeur. Um, maybe about four or five times I drove them back and forth to Americana and picked them up and so forth. I will tell you this much. Uh, traffic was not horrendous at all. Albeit you had tons and tons of people. I don't remember having seen 200 people crossing the Harvard um, and uh, Brand uh, uh, intersection at one time. I mean, and, I, and I've been handling the leasing uh, um, of those buildings across the street. So I was quite impressed by the traffic and the way that the traffic was handled. Um, I know it was a, uh, um, a joint uh, um, effort between the PD and the traffic department, the redevelopment agency, but uh, it was quite impressive. I mean, having that kind of a crowd in there and not having traffic as bad as I thought it would be 
it was it was a uh, um, uh, it was great. Um, as an anecdotal evidence, spillover effect on Sunday. I um, had family members from outside uh, of town. I had to take them to BJ's, <coughs> my first time to BJ's, by the way. I had heard that when they had opened, their first night or their second night was the best in their franchise history. And uh, uh, the server, the waiter that was serving was on our table, was mentioning that the Friday evening, BJ's had three-hour wait. In other words, they ran to a point that it was a panic for them. They were running out of food from what uh, they were telling me. And most of the people were from Americana. I mean, the spillover effect that we were talking, I hope this will continue. And if it doesn't, we should continue that trolley, uh, Mr. <laughs> Chair, all the way up to uh, uh, North Brand. Um, the other thing that I, that I witnessed, which was quite a surprise, a pleasant one, was the cross traffic between Americana and Galleria. I saw a lot of people walking uh, across the Central. And all in all, Gentlemen, this was a very, very successful three days. I mean, I, and and I was there at all different times, and I called a lot of people, I spoke to a lot of people. They all felt the same thing. Traffic was not an issue at all, and that's a great sign. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Astorian. I have no other cards. I will close oral communications. Let's move to the next item, please. On the business agenda at 6A is a public hearing, Director of Development Services, regarding variance for signage for Outback Steakhouse located at 146 South Brand Boulevard in the Glendale Marketplace. At 6A1 is a motion approving variance for a wall sign, marquee sign, and two directional signs based on findings and conditions made pursuant to Glendale Municipal Code Title 30, Chapter 30.43. Okay, this is a public hearing. I will open the public hearing. Go to uh, Mr. Lanzapain for the report. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the agency, uh, this is a request for sign variance for Outback Steakhouse. They are located on the second level of the marketplace. Uh, they recently have opened. Um, the signs that exist there today are those that are allowed by code in the current sign program. Uh, in order to attract a, a national tenant to the second floor, uh, the request has been made to uh, provide additional signage for exposure. Uh, the signs are, there, there are basically three types of signs that are being asked for. One over the door uh, that, that announces <coughs> Outback uh, that is technically considered a wall sign uh, by our code. One that is on the rotunda uh, and the, the big round circular element on Brand Boulevard. Uh, that, according to the sign program that was adopted ten years ago uh, was reserved for uh, tenants of, of a certain size, 30,000 or 40,000 square feet. Uh, and then some directional signage that will point the way from the marketplace parking garage across Maryland uh, to the second story restaurant. Outback has opened uh, and, and they are requesting the sign. Uh, one of the things that we are working with uh, the property owner is a comprehensive sign program. Uh, he is working on that with a sign consultant. It, these will be consistent with that sign program, but Outback has made the request today. Uh, we would like to get that before you sooner rather than later so that we don't have a whole string of these, uh, but you have a comprehensive <coughs> sign program. This is basically signage that existed prior to, uh, it's just organized a little bit different for a different type of tenant. Uh, we are recommending approval of the variance uh, to give that exposure to this important second level tenant. Uh, with that, uh, staff is here for questions, the urban designer, our project manager, as well as representatives from Outback. Okay. Um, let me, I don't have any cards, so I would like to uh, close the public hearing. Ex I'm sorry. Is that, uh, okay, that's not for this. Close the public hearing, uh, Mr. Isefian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was at Outback last night, actually, and uh, uh, I I know exactly where you're going to put the signs, and I don't have an issue with it. And with that, I'd like to move 6A1. Second. If there's an, any further discussion, we'll take roll call. Agency members, Draymond? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Yousefian? Aye. Chairman Jarian? Yes. Mr. Jarian? Mr. Weaver? I would like to ask one question. Yeah, folks from Outback 
How was your attendance over the weekend? Somebody Outback, come please come forward. I just want to know another restaurant. <clears throat> Average, good. Did Mr. Sefian leave a good tip? <laughs> it's important, too. Did he but pay? Did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The attendance for the Outback over the weekend was, was very high. Uh, we are very pleased on how the business went and uh, we're forward to uh, uh, more business coming our way. So you, have, you don't have much to compare against since you're so new. Well, no, we don't really. But um, um, we have high expectations for the restaurant. Did you, did you have a waiting list? Oh, yes, yes, we did. That was average wait on our list last night was actually for over the weekend went up to about about 50 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next item, please. Is there any agency, additional agency member or staff comments? Mr. Sefian. Thank you, sir. Um, I will tell you I was also at the town center. I went there yesterday. Um, I drove around several times during the week to see how the traffic is doing and kind of feeling guilty because I'm actually adding to the traffic. But nevertheless, I wanted to make sure that it was flowing well. Uh, I must say uh, staff did a good job trying to get the police department to manage the traffic real well. Uh, although a couple of times I saw the hand saying don't cross and kids would just run against the hand anyway, but we had some officers who pulled the kids aside and gave them a nice little talking to. Uh, but nevertheless, I went there yesterday, and my <coughs> wife called me. I was working, and she called me, and she says, let's go. Let's go play at town center. So uh, I said, really? We're going to go someplace in Glendale? <laughs> so we went out, and uh, I got home late, about 8.30. So we got there about quarter to 9 on a Monday, mind you, to see hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people and a location in Glendale was just mind-boggling to me. I lived in this city for over 30 years. Never seen any location be so busy. Place was hopping. People were there with their kids, uh, with their elderly parents, with their dates. I mean, it was a place to go. So we thought, okay, we'll go grab something to eat. Interestingly, we ran into... Uh, uh, the gentleman who designed the place, the architect, and he was there at 9 o'clock almost, checking the place out, making sure everything is going on. Um, so we went to grab something at, at the restaurant. I would say the line at Cheesecake Factory was so long that we just walked in, looked at the line, and must have been at least 100, 150 people standing in line just to put their names in. Forget the ones who already had their names into the list. So we said, nah, we will probably get to eat midnight. <laughs> Let's leave. So we went to the Japanese restaurant. Uh, we thought, okay, 400 seats. We can get a nice seat there. Let's eat there. Uh, to our surprise, the young lady handed us a card, said, please make reservations for next week because we're booked off this week. <laughs> So you have to wait a whole week to make reservations because it's already booked. Um, went to a couple of other restaurants. Same story, repeating itself. Very full, got to wait a long time. It did my heart good because as those restaurants are packed, I just can hear ka-ching, 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 <laughs> and money coming to the city. I mean, it was fantastic. Uh, people were gathered around the the fountain, watching the fountain, they were very happy. So uh, since we were not able to eat at the Americana because it was so successful, we kind of walked up the hill and uh, we saw Outback sign and the nice little truck that's parked in the, they said, hey, let's go Outback. So we walked upstairs and uh, uh, the, thank God it wasn't completely packed and I didn't have to wait 20 minutes. Uh, we got a seat, we sat down, and we talked, and the waiters basically told us that they have been very busy 
because of what is going on with the Americana. Uh, so uh, I was glad that Outback was there. I didn't get to you at your opening, but I did go to your restaurant, and I did pay, <laughs> by the way, and I left a good tip. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, more than 15 percent, I must tell you, because uh, I, I believe in this economy. The least I could do to those poor people to help them out, uh, and and uh, enjoy the meal it was very good. Thank you very much. Uh, and we went home at 10 o'clock at night on a Monday night for the first time. We went somewhere in Glendale, and there was a race place. So I was I was happy. It made all the pain and suffering I put through. The year I was mayor, while we were approving this, it was worth it. So I walked out of there going, you know, it was worth it. We ran into many Glendale residents who said the same thing, which is, is this really Glendale? Are we in really in Glendale? And Mr. Milano, you're absolutely right. When you're in there, you have a complete different sense of the space and the way it looks. And when you drive out, you kind of go, yikes, I think there needs to be some improvement. And, and, and that generally happens. I know that for a fact, because when I remodel kitchens and bathrooms and houses, the room that you just remodeled looks great, and the rest of the house doesn't look so great compared to what you had just done. So that's naturally that happens. So hopefully we'll move in that direction. It's a good step and I think uh, a good standard to uh, live up to uh, for the future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Quintero. Yeah. <clears throat> I also uh, drove around Saturday and uh, Sunday afternoon and evening and actually the traffic was uh, flowing fairly decently. I think it was the PD and uh, uh, traffic and transportation did a good job of keeping people moving and uh, so, yeah, that was uh, that was a success. No doubt about it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> did we get a report on a future agenda as to uh, what procedures are required to create an East Colorado redevelopment zone? East Colorado? I think he's referring to across the street on Brand, the block of... If you're referring to Mr. Milano's comments, right. I, I think his reference is to the frontage businesses on Brand on the east side. I think that's what... I think he was talking about East Colorado. Yeah. You know, the motels, the... Okay. So, right. just a report on the process okay. and what what findings need to be made. It's going to be okay. a blight area. Uh, et cetera. Uh, and I presume that would be... Right, right. I know there's been some changes made, so. More difficult. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Lanza. Mr. Chairman, if I could just make a public service announcement. Uh, we do have a free shuttle, parking shuttle, that uh, will pick people up at the Orange Street Garage, at the Marketplace Garage, the Exchange Garage, drop them at the Americana and Galleria. Uh, it is a free service of the City of Glendale, so you could park there and, and not have to deal with some of the parking issues. Thank you. Transit is good. Uh, Mr. Damon. It's not to be a wet blanket, but I was asked over the weekend, actually, thank you, uh, Mr. Lansfain, for bringing the point up. I was asked over the weekend uh, about the shuttle, and the question was, who is paying for it? The answer is? Sunday. The answer is? The, the Lansfain. Yeah, redevelopment Lansfain. agency, redevelopment <laughs> agency uh, for the time that it's uh, running for free, which will depend on how we see the adjustment of the Americana going. I will say the numbers were on Friday. We had all of, I think, 57 people write it in the course of the entire day, double that amount on Saturday, and five times that amount uh, by the end of the day on Sunday. So it's growing. We're going to take more efforts to, uh, to uh, advertise it. Might even be looking at some additional temporary incentives to get people up to the uh, Orange Street parking garage block. As a result, find out the great things that are happening in Midbrand. And by the way, I would just add that the the questioner that asked the post the question was not criticizing. Thought it was a good idea. <laughs> I, was yeah. I I was asked who's paying for the overtime, the police overtime, city or the overtime that for the the opening events was pay, paid for by the developer, with the police and, and traffic that's needed. They will continue to look to the developer on a deposit basis. We, have re we reviewed all of that, including the budget with Mr. Crusoe, prior to the event. 
And I will tell you, as I think as most of you know, we were doing pre-planning three months before the Americana opened. We identified every bottleneck that occurred and had a, had a strategy in place to respond to it. I mean, literally every bottleneck that occurred, uh, traffic, engineering, public works, redevelopment, were ready to respond and did, and it worked wonderfully well. Good plan. Mr. Sefkin. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I forgot to say one thing. I did have an opportunity to talk to one of the Crusoe-affiliated people on Monday night. Uh, I asked them how how well they did over the three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 400,000 people visited the site. That was their number. So I thought I thought the staff did a great job handling that traffic. 400,000 in three days. Such tight quarters. Done very well. And looking at those numbers growing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there any new business? Move to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned.